Hey everyone, it's Tom Kradza. So let's go into the Canadian money supply. In the past, when we've talked about real estate, we've looked at some of the fundamentals. But today, I really want to dive into the Canadian money supply. I think it's been bothering me lately, the more I kind of look into this, just that some of it's not exactly clear. And I just want to look at this myself. So I want to share some of the stuff we've done with you. We've had a few requests for this. Let me put this into full screen mode. Um, so in the past, we've looked at supply of real estate, specifically in the greater Toronto area, demand, interest rates, debt and deficit. And if you've missed that and you want to catch up a little bit, just track down our YouTube channel, go to youtube.com forward slash user forward slash rockstar inner circle. Find this video, four main factors driving Toronto real estate prices. Actually, we'll put the URL for that particular video in the, the, the description or the notes or whatever, wherever you're watching this particular video, we'll have that in the description so you can get directly to it. Because we go into detail about housing supply. And when you see some of the housing supply and the demand that we're creating in this area, a lot of the real estate prices begin to make some sense. But it's this hidden reason that we outlined here that I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into today. And that's the Canadian money supply. So for context, if we look at the average greater Toronto real estate prices and averages of real estate, you know, usually aren't very insightful. When you average everything together, the data that you can get from that isn't the best when we average, you know, condos into single family homes and do the whole bit, but it does give us a baseline to do some analysis from. And we took that from the Toronto real estate board. Um, so that is the Toronto regional real estate board data. And it's going all the way back. Can I move my little window here. Hold on. Hold on. There's the URL. It's going all the way back to 1969. So that's, um, that's where we took this data. So there, there is the average Toronto real estate prices. Now, if we layer in some other things, um, now, if we look at this, here is M1. So Canadian base money. And base money, when you map it against, so the scale for base money, by the way, is on the left-hand side, and the Toronto real estate prices are on the right-hand side. So it's it's not, you know, the scales are different, obviously, but you can kind of see trends that line up pretty closely here as M1 increases. So as more money supply, base money is created, definitely there seems to be a, you know, a correlation, I'm not sure it's a causation, but there's definitely a correlation of real estate prices that makes me want to throw all the other analysis right out the window because this thing follows pretty accurately. And we pulled this, by the way, from Stats Canada. There's the URL there if you want to look at some of this stuff yourself. You can also get the definitions from M1. And um, Stats Canada makes the definitions as confusing as possible, by the way. But that's our base money. So that makes me think, you know, as our currency, as more and more currency is created, it's not really the housing prices that are going up. It's it's really just the way we price the real estate. The value of the dollars is going down. And if we if we look at this in more detail, here is M1 and now M2. So M2 is considered broad money supply. So M1 is the base money of a country. M2 is broad money supply. So they, incre uh, they include other things like money market funds into M2 and some other savings accounts into M2 and things like that. And again, you can see how Stats Canada defines it if you go to that URL right there. But if we if we change the scale to kind of get M2 onto this chart as well, um, on the left-hand side, if we change that scale so that M2 fits on there, you can see that real estate prices kind of map almost exactly to the growth of money supply, which again, it just makes me think like, you know, everyone thinks real estate is going up. So they're, you know, they're getting, not everyone, I shouldn't say that, but many people think real estate's going up and, you know, it's good. Obviously something, some people think it's bad, but you know, it's good. I'm kind of getting ahead. But then if you go to look at selling your property and you look around, you really can't buy anything else because everything else has gone up in value. So if you're trying to capitalize on what you think is a, a gain in your real estate, but then you want to sell your house in Toronto or Mississauga or Whitby or Ajax or Oakville or Burlington or Barrie, and you want to live in maybe a different house, but in the same area, and you look around at prices, everything's gone up. So has real estate really gone up or is just the value of the currency and dollars in our pocket, has that gone down? 
because you really haven't got ahead. You can't really capitalize on those gains unless you had four or five properties as investments, then you might be able to, but just as one property, is it really going up and affecting your life or just the value of the dollars because there's been more M2 put into the system as this chart shows. So as the currency increases, the value of our dollars is just going down. And it's kind of given me all these different thoughts that, you know, is the Canadian government solely responsible for M2 increasing or does real estate borrowing create currency and increase M2? Because when you and I go to the bank and sign paperwork to get a mortgage, we are creating money. And then if you give that money, so you've taken a mortgage, you've borrowed new money, new money is created, you give it to somebody else. If they're taking that money and just putting it in their savings account, well, is that counted as M2? So did you know buying more real estate just create more M2? So is the real estate market creating more M2? You know, it's kind of like a chicken and egg thing to me. So is the real estate market, is the borrowing of the real estate market causing M2 to increase and it's not the government directly increasing M2? It's people borrowing money. But then I think it's, it's, it's blocked off here a little bit, but artificial low rates are pumping the real estate market. So then it is the government and central banks that are causing M2 to increase indirectly because no one would be going aggressively into the real estate market if the interest rates were not artificially low. Like right now in Canada, you can get a five-year fixed rate under 2%. You can get variable rates for like 1.25%. So it's the central banks who have artificially kept these interest rates low by creating new currency and buying bonds, keeping rates low. So they're all also creating new money. But then we're all kind of going into the real estate market and borrowing, and that's also creating M2. Or is it? So I, I definitely would love someone to come on and clarify some of that thinking for me. But the bottom line is that cheap and easy new Canadian dollars are creating havoc in the real estate market. Individual Canadians are not causing real estate prices to increase. Government policies are. Because if you believe it's people going into the real estate market, you know, and they're at fault for creating prices to, in, uh, to go up, we have another, you know, thing for you. Just, re, and we don't, I'm spilling all over my words. I'm, stuttering all the time. I'm obviously tired this morning. Um, we, we, we don't believe that's the case. Once you look at, you know, supply and demand and rates and debts and deficits, these are things all that the government has, you know, incorrectly managed and is causing havoc in the real estate market. So to us, it's definitely government policies kind of creating this mess. In this kind of video, we're just giving you some of our some of our thoughts. But we do we do know dollars. I apologize that it's blocked out there. Dollars are losing their value aggressively. So the one thing we do know is that do not save in Canadian dollars, because Canadian dollars relative to anything that is more scarce is losing value. That's why we strongly do not believe in Canadian dollars, and we believe the faulty central bank money policies are causing inaccurate pricing mechanisms in our economy and it's going to continue to cause more and more havoc. So there's a quick look at some of the money supply. I'm not sure we answered any questions with that particular video, but maybe it gives you something to think about. It's definitely giving us something to think about. Thanks for watching these things. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed. Some of the links to where we're getting this data are included below. If you have any comments or anything else that you want to see from us, let us know. And thanks to Kyle and our team for putting together that video. Until next time, your life, your terms.